so the official teaser for the next installment of the MonsterVerse has finally arrived. Godzilla X Kong, The New Empire. And even though it was short, just over 35 seconds long, there is a bit that I want to talk about beginning with this guy. For now, people are calling him Emperor Kong, and he appears to be based on an orangutan due to the reddish fur, low slung head, and those long arms. Though I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't link him to something more ancient like Gigantopithecus an extinct ape that lived in the early to middle Pleistocene era. A lot of the other titans are based on mythical or ancient creatures, and a Titanus Gigantopithecus would cover both bases. It's old, and many think that it led to the legends of Bigfoot and the Yeti, where early man actually had encounters with these creatures. Unfortunately, to date, we've only uncovered teeth and jawbones, but current classifications have them sharing an ancestor with the orangutan, and some of the concept art reflects this as well, so I wouldn't be surprised if Legendary went that route. With that said, it really does look like a modern orangutan, so let's see how they compare to the gorillas, the closest modern relative to Kong. They rank just below humans as hominids and brain power, with both of them being the only two on Earth that can communicate and refer to their past, something not seen yet in gorillas. Though in the MonsterVerse, Kong uses sign language and human-like reasoning and deductive skills, so it's possible that the Emperor is above that. There are videos out there saying that he's talking in the teaser, but I'd need to see more footage to confirm that, and it wouldn't be the first time monsters talked in a Godzilla movie. I just hope it's not happening here. So it could be smarter than Kong, but he would have an edge in strength as a gorilla-based titan. Sumatran orangutans can get up to 6 feet tall and weigh around 285 pounds, while gorillas can get a bit larger at 6.5 feet tall yet can be nearly twice as heavy at around 480 pounds. And just in case you're curious, Gigantopithecus has been estimated to be around 10 feet tall and in the range of 400 to 600 pounds. The biggest hint of a power set of the Emperor comes to us from his eyes and that ominous blue glow, a trait seen in Godzilla when he charges up an atomic blast or is trying to intimidate something else. Kong's eyes have had an orange glow to them before, but it's not the same thing that we see here, more of a reflection. The Emperor has been down in the Hollow Earth where he can absorb that Hollow Earth energy. In the Godzilla species, this could be what gave them their atomic breath and pulse abilities. If this is the case, only time will tell how it could manifest in the Emperor or in a Kong. The classic Toho King Kong was able to shock Godzilla with electricity after being hit by lightning, so perhaps the Emperor would have a similar ability. The orangutan is also a tool user like Kong, so he could have a weapon or shield of some kind. Every ruler needs a throne, and the Emperor's is a bit different than Kong's, having a pillar on each side, where his was carved into one large column. Now there were skeletons in front of Kong's throne, but here they cover the floor and are piling up, consisting of what appear to be Godzilla and Kong or giant ape skeletons. And right up front is a skull of each one, glowing in their signature blue and orange hues signifying that the new guy is coming for our two Alpha Titans. With the film's title having a purple tone showing the kings working together, and the Emperor in red, a color that we've seen with many enemy titans like Mecha-G and the Mutos. Did the Emperor kill all these titans laying at his feet? Or did something else allowing him to take the throne in their absence? Or did they kill each other off? After all, it looks like it's all Godzilla's and Kong's. Unfortunately, we'll have to wait and see. But the subtitle, The New Empire and the Throne, imply to me that this emperor is the king of the Hollow Earth, like Godzilla is the king of the oceans and surface of the planet. If Godzilla controls the titans up above, then this guy likely controls them below. And with his possible advanced intelligence and a more direct access to the titan power source, maybe he can take it one step further and control the minds of titans as well an ability used by the humans in the ancient Titan Wars mentioned in this part of the film's official synopsis. The epic new film will delve further into the histories of these Titans, their origins, and the mysteries of Skull Island and beyond, while uncovering the mythic battle that helped forge these extraordinary beings and tied them to humankind forever. To find more info on these Titan Wars, we only need to look at the segments of redacted text from the opening credits of Godzilla, King of the Monsters, just keep in mind these aren't complete sentences, so they sound a little funny. Footage from USS Scorpion Submarine revealed the Hollow Earth ruins predate all known human civilizations. Show ancient humans worship titans, forming symbiotic relationships with some, others scavenge fallen titans for food, building structures from bones and hides. 
Massive horns were created to replicate their calls, called some of the creatures gods, the old ones, or dragons. Every culture, including, worshipped their own titan. Tribes built their homes near benevolent titan nests to protect against the more hostile creatures. Evidence shows may have even developed telepathic communication with the creatures, attempted to control them to use for warfare. Some titans rebelled against and their human masters. The massive cataclysm destroyed this advanced civilization, triggered a war between man and monster. Other survivors scattered across the globe, forming colonies. As time passed, even oral tradition unable to preserve much knowledge of these ancient creatures. Found evidence of these colonies in Egypt, North America, Europe, Asia, and South America. Titans were not invulnerable to the geological catastrophes that followed. This cataclysm triggered the Ice Age, sending the Titans into hibernation. The surviving pockets of humanity soon forgot their connection to the creatures. Stories were passed down orally, their history becoming a blur of gods and monsters, myths and legends. Fictionalized by time, this inspired Monarch to excavate the ruins of these civilizations and extract truths from their stories. Their mythology became a centuries-old tapestry to unravel. Believe the Titans are essential to our survival, that the creatures are vital to the planet's ecosystem, leading to theorize that if the ancient humans lived in balance with the creatures, then so can we. Monarch scientists embarked on missions to find dormant titans all around the world, while found sleeping beasts deep beneath many major cities, explored ruins in Peru, Vietnam, and Easter Island. Now we also know that other new titans are going to be seen in the Hollow Earth, and many fans are speculating that Space Godzilla could be the film's actual villain, like Mecha G was in GVK. Surprisingly, there are two items that give a bit of weight to the idea. First off, we have this from the Godzilla vs. Kong art book, a concept image of the throne room and more importantly a painting on its ceiling, one where red Kongs with axes and two red Godzillas appear to be fighting off a blue winged Godzilla coming down from space. Now Space Godzilla didn't have wings, but some of his concept images did, and concept art and unused ideas have a habit of making their way into later film installments. There's also this easter egg in Call of Duty, a cave painting with this unknown titan and if you look closer at its back, you can make out crystals similar to Space Godzilla's. It's fun stuff to think about, but personally I'll hold off getting excited about Space G until we see more in the leaks and the trailers. Otherwise guys, thanks for watching, take care, and I hope to see you next time.